Good morning. Hi, good morning, Mom. <laughs> Welcome to this Realtor is Cooking with James Rashidi. And today, once again, I'm here with my mother, Mildred, and okay. grandmother to 20, mother to seven, and great grandmother to six. Six? Okay. Last time I said grandmother to 18, but I forgot about two kids, so it's really 20. <laughs> so the two of them, you don't know who you are, but I'm sorry. Anyway, so today, what are we making? We're making brajol, which is an old standby that you can put into your sauce and simmer away in your Sunday gravy. Right, Sunday gravy. What's gravy versus sauce? In, gravy is In your made. world. <laughs> Gravy is made with meat. Sauce is just tomatoes and whatever. So a gravy is kind of another word for ragu. Yeah. So you'll find that a lot of the New Jersey, New York, Boston people yeah. refer to it as gravy. Yeah. All the other non-Italian people in the world say another sauce, they but they don't know any better. Another <laughs> word they used was ragu. Ragu, yeah. But that That's was always a meat gravy. Meat gravy. So we're gonna take this meat right here, which I am using eye round so this is a very lean cut of meat meaning there's no fat so just to cook this by itself would be very tough so this particular cut of meat needs to be basically braised which it means we're cooking something in liquid over low heat for a long time and that will make it really tender everything will break down so brazola is what how do we make it mom you take your piece of meat right here and that's the first thing we're going to do yeah and cuts, uh, yeah, that's Cut about it. right, about, what's that, a half inch? Probably a yeah, half to a quarter inch, Yeah. depending on how big your eye round is. And this time we're making uh, smaller versions, depends on what kind of meat you're using. Yeah. And I, like, yeah. I like this one just because it's easy to get uniform sized pieces with the eye the round. Yeah. Now, a lot of times in the grocery store, this will already be pounded thin, layered, and you can already buy it, and you might be able to skip this step. But this is the fun of cooking, is we want to do everything. So I'm just going to cut a few pieces here, okay? I'm trying to set this one aside. So now we have our piece of meat here. We can't just roll this up. So what we want to do is pound this out really thin, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, but not too thin that it falls apart. Right. So. We have our mallet here. So this is our, our uh, mallet. So one side's flat and one side has little spiky things on it. So the flat side we'll use initially. So we're just gonna give it a good whack. Here, you do Okay. It. <laughs> Watch your fingers. Gonna hit it harder than that. There you go. <laughs> Get all my frustrations taken here. You didn't have frustrations raising seven kids, did you? Oh no, it was peaceful <laughs> all the time. There, see? So yeah, so I'm gonna finish it up for you. So then we're gonna use the little spiky eyes, and this will just tenderize it a little bit. thin piece of meat that we can roll out. It's got to be flexible enough. Yeah. So I'm not going to do this whole piece of meat, but look here, we already have some done. So we did a bunch of these already pounded out ahead of time. So, and then we're going to teach you. Okay. What so now that we got all our meat pounded, tenderized, we are going to add our filling to it, roll them up, and then we're going to brown them in the pan, remove them from the pan, and we're going to make a gravy. Then we're going to add all the meat back in the pan and let it simmer for however long it takes, probably a, a couple hours. Okay. okay, so, but for the next step, Mom, what are we doing here? What do we have? We got a bunch of stuff over here. Okay. So show me, tell everybody what we got. We got. Who? You, you, me? You. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got flavored, uh, Italian flavored breadcrumbs. We have grated, in this case, Parmesan, but you can use Romano, whatever you like. We have pepper. We don't need salt because we have plenty of these two items. Oh, okay. All right. 
And parsley. And parsley. I forgot. Yeah. You forgot to chop the parsley. Here, let me have a chop it up real quick. This comes from Brother Peter's garden. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. And you can, uh, gotta use fresh parsley here, folks. Really mince that. Oh, why well, need a better mincing knife? Hold on. There we go. We just happen to have them. Move that out of the way. How's that? Okay. Good enough. We'll move that to there. Move that to here. Move this back here. Okay. All right. Now let's use some pepper. Okay. So you want me to pepper these? The other sous chef. So yeah. to make life easy, instead of doing one at a time, lay them all out on your cutting board, just like I have here. And then we want to go pepper. And don't be shy. Fresh pepper, please. Okay, why don't you do the cheese? And the cheese. Okay. You can't see it, but right between us, we have a Labrador retriever. He's waiting. Well, who's making sure nothing falls on the floor. Oh, I know, he's very <laughs> good at that. Right, Noel? You can go around the front, <laughs> Noel, so we can see you. No, I don't think so. All right. Okay, I'm almost done. Okay. Well, you want to do your breadcrumbs next? Yes. Okay. Well, you do the breadcrumbs. I'll follow you with a little parsley. How about right. that? We'll, we'll go start this, this way. way. Then. Yeah. If you were to Google this on YouTube, and you'll find a hundred different ways to make this. Everybody puts lots of films in these, so we're doing just a very traditional way that my mom was taught growing up. So not complicated ingredients you probably have in the house but a lot of people will put everything from a thin slice of prosciutto in here egg raisins pine nuts it's really endless there's no rules but for me i think basic very basic simple not overpowering is the best way to do it so from here now we got our pepper our breadcrumbs our parmesan cheese and our fresh Parsley here. So we're gonna roll these, right? Yep. And you Start just- Start from the, the narrower end and just keep a nice tight roll. Yep. There we go. And I'll continue here. Keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I finished. So to secure these, you can do it with a couple of toothpicks or you can do what we're gonna do. I have a big thing of butcher's twine here or any string and you can use this. And now when my mom's finishing these up, I'll start cutting some string. So we'll just snip. I'm gonna use two pieces on each one. I'll Okay. okay, that's a good idea. And I'll just do a little knot here, like so. And I'll do another one here. You know what? I cut that one too short. Okay. So. Well, there you go. To do this assembly line style, I would lay out two pieces of string under each roll. Okay. And then just. All right, well, we'll okay. do that. And uh, next time. <laughs> we're gonna finish this up when we come back. We're gonna get our pot hot and we're gonna start browning. Oh, we're back. Hi, so uh, we finished doing our meat rolls here. And also on the plate, we have a little bit of pork. So this is what's gonna really give great flavor to our gravy as well. So my pan has been heating up here. So mom, you're gonna put in some olive oil? Yes. Okay. Put in a little bit of olive oil. Don't drown it. Probably like a, a couple of tablespoons. Couple of tablespoons. Yeah. Okay. So
So let me bring the camera in a little bit closer so we can see it. Okay, so as you can see, there's the olive oil on the bottom of the pan and it's smoking a little bit. So mom is, whoops, she put a little piece of parsley oh, in there to test. Oh, that's good. Okay, so. Okay, I don't have my tongs you handy. You can use your fingers. So put these in very carefully. And this is in a huge pot right here, so we're gonna have to do this in batches. I think that's probably good. There's um, four. Put one more in. Yeah. All right, you, we got four in there. You don't have to cook this thoroughly. Just brown it nicely. It'll finish cooking when it's simmering in the gravy. So right. just get a nice color on there. So why don't you find your tongs so we can turn them? Mm -hmm. Your tongs? My tongs, thank you. We got a nice zoomed in shot, man. So, well, it'll, when it's ready to turn, it'll just release by itself off the pan. Look at that. That's, see that nice caramelization of the meat right there? Okay. That's what we're looking for. Beautiful. Okay. So, turn them off. So, this is only going to take a couple minutes on each side. Those are looking good. Are they browned on all sides? Yeah. I got it. Do you have room for that pork? Yeah. Just a nice fatty piece of pork. A couple of those. Come on. Yeah. Okay, that looks like... Noel, is the food ready yet? Noel, where's the food? <laughs> this is Noel keeping watch, making sure we, we're keeping a clean floor here. All right, we took out the rest of the meat that we browned and we're adding the rest of the pork. When this browns, we're gonna go ahead and remove it from the pan and we'll start the gravy. So we browned all our meat, our brajol and our pork. So we're gonna set this aside and we have all that nice caramelization in the bottom of the pan. Now I had to heat on very low. So we're gonna add, what are we adding next? First, uh, you wanna brown Lightly brown your onions. So we have some chopped, Don't burn some chopped onions. Do not burn. Not that much, probably and about a quarter cup or so. Then I have some garlic, whole garlic cloves, and we're just going to smash these like that with the back of our knife. Just a very coarse chop. And that's going to go in there as well. And why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this for flavor? For flavor, okay. For flavor. So do what we, do we do after it browns? Do we leave it in there? No, absolutely not. <laughs> you don't want all those brown bits floating around. You take it out with a slotted spoon and set it aside, and then you will put in your tomato paste. Tomato paste. I think you may need a little more oil in there. Go ahead, it's right there. Put some more oil in there. Just a dollop. Good. Okay. So we're just gonna let these soften. And we all know what garlic and onion this smells will take like. A couple of minutes. One of the most wonderful smells in the world. A couple minutes here. Yeah. So while this is kind of flavoring the pan. We're gonna cook this with, um, we use in San Marziano tomatoes from Italy. So these are whole peeled tomatoes. I have two of these big cans. One can of tomato paste, the size you see everywhere. Um, we have a little bit of wine, red wine. Any red wine you have on hand works. And some fresh basil. Then we'll season it with probably a little bit of salt and pepper. What we did, we took my mom's blender. And this is these whole tomatoes and put them in the blender and just quickly pulse them. So they're still um, kind of large. It's not like totally liquid in here. And we're gonna pour that in here after we take out the garlic and onions. All right, mom, this is looking good. Take a look, here, give it a stir. Okay. We're getting there. Okay, we're getting Ooh, I can smell the garlic. Mm, can you smell that? I can smell it. <laughs> it smells good. So why don't you take those out and just put them on the uh, yeah. dish here. 
this it just softened and I like big chunks of garlic personally but you said your father doesn't like all those your father oh, didn't like yeah, all those I things would, I would have sliced the onions a little larger it'd be easy to handle hey but, mom what did your father do for a living he was a custom women's tailor oh did he make your clothes yes he did and I had to wear homemade clothes <laughs> I wasn't too smart <laughs> okay, that looks good enough. Okay, so let's go ahead. And um, now we're going to put in some tomato paste. Okay. All right, hold on, Mom. Let me, let me reposition camera. Another dollop of oil, I think. Okay, so we're going to add the tomato paste. Yeah. You can do that. There you go. Okay, we can keep using this spoon, I guess. Mm -hmm. You want to cook this down so it starts shrinking, but don't burn it. Okay, we still have it on top of a medium heat. Medium heat. Yeah. You can just you know, stir it around whenever the spirit moves you. All right, that looks pretty good. Should we have the tomatoes um, next or put wine? Little, put a little salt and pepper in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll get some salt. Is, uh, where did I put the salt? Um, I yeah, oh, it's right here, Mom. Ah, okay. Yeah, we have salt right here. So go ahead. Just a little. Another thing about the seasoning is I got the pepper for you. taste as you go along. There we go. That looks good. Stir that up. I got it. So this is just tomato paste in here right now. The olive oil that was seasoned, the flavor with the garlic and the onions. It's just a, the most amazing yeah. smell in the world. And it'll even get better when we add a little wine and basil. All right, okay. how about the tomatoes? Or, or wine first. No, wine comes after the tomatoes. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit so we can get yeah. this going. Okay. Now you can throw in a little wine. All right, throw in the wine. Just a, uh, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Done. I think we should put the basil in now. Yes, tear it up. Tear the basil, never what? Never do what? Never chop it? Never chop it with a knife. It'll turn brown. Just... And we're just tearing this up. Yeah. I probably have like four or five basil leaves in there. Freshly picked yesterday. All right. Okay, so we're going to bring this up to heat, and then we'll add our meat. Correct? We're gonna bring it the heat, yes. heat it up, and then we'll add the meat back. Yes, then you put your eat meat back in there. Half cover it so the heat stays in and the steam and all. And we'll let this simmer probably at least two hours. At least two hours. And as I said before, taste as you go along. You may need some more salt, you may need a little bit of pepper, you may want a pinch of red pepper leaves. Okay. Wonderful. Whatever. Okay. So, looks like it's pretty hot. Why don't you add all the meat back? All right. I won't splash you. Like Please. Like me. Sorry. <laughs> and this meat is going to cook 
and tenderize. The longer it cooks, the better it tastes. So if you were like making meatballs, for example, this is for sausage with gravy, kind of Southern Italian style, New England style, Boston style, this is how you would do it. You brown your meat, you take your meat out, you make your gravy, you add your meat back, you season it however you want to season it, you know, basil, oregano, salt, pepper, all the normal Italian things. You cover it, you let it simmer all day Sunday and then you have an early Sunday dinner. So we're at the point now where the meat is in here and we're gonna simmer it, half covered for a couple hours and we get back, when we get back, we're gonna show you how to serve it over some type of pasta noodle macaroni. All right, so stay tuned. All right, mom, it looks, it looks like it's done. It's been about two hours or so. Um, throughout it was cooking, mom would check it every now and then, add a little more salt, add a little pepper. So we have these nice, these nice, nice big, these nice pieces of the brajola in here. So how would, um, when you were growing up and your mom was making this, how would, how would you serve her? What was a typical night for you when you sat a down for dinner with you and you had, there was five of you plus your parents, right? Yeah. Seven. Oh. So they had a family okay. of seven for dinner. Should we go for Sunday? Sunday dinner. What's Sunday, Sunday dinner, dinner back in the 1940s? <laughs> My mother in would Boston. get up early, uh -huh. prepare the meats, the meatball, the sauce, and it would be on the stove maybe seven or eight o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah. Well, they had to cook a long time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had Sunday dinner around two o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And we always had pasta. We called it macaroni. Macaroni. We had macaroni on Sunday. Tuesday and Thursday. You could set your watch by that. Okay, so to begin the meal, we would have pasta, macaroni, so, different kinds, but always with the red gravy. Mm -hmm. Cheese was not served at the table. My mother mixed everything and then put a big platter of pasta on the table. We ate that. No meat, no meatballs, no bread on the table. Second course, platter of meat, whichever was there, brush all the meatballs, pork, sausages, whatever. Uh -huh. Okay? So just like we're doing here, we have a little yep. pork in here, we have the meat we're taking out, and so on. And the bread would come back out so you could mop up your dish and then take your meat course. Sure. And the salad came out with this, and usually it was just lettuce with a little oil and vinegar and salt. And That's that it. was it. And you had your bread and so forth. We never had dessert. Dessert was a bowl of fresh fruit. Mm -hmm. Water or wine, that was all. No soda, nothing like that at mealtime. Okay. At the end of the meal, Mm -hmm. After the fruit course, uh, they would probably have espresso, a little, and maybe a little digestivo. Like a, a, like a strega? Yeah, or some kind of cordial with the, with the meat, with the uh, coffee. I'm just going to taste this. Okay. How is it? It's absolutely fabulous. It's beefy. Can I taste? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm going to give you a piece Cut. of string, so hold on. I didn't take the string off of this, so. Here, let me give you a little outside piece. Right there. There you go. Mmm. Need a little salt. <laughs> Need a little bit of salt, but you can always add that. But still, it's good. It's not bad. It really isn't. Yeah. That, I should cut down the salt anyway. I'm just putting it back here because we're not going to eat all this right now. Mm -hmm. So, there you have it, Mom. Thank you very much. Brazola. Not to be confused. What's the thin stuff that they, the deli meat? There's brazola, brazola. Anyway, you'll figure it out. But this is a very simple to make. It takes a little time, but all good things take a little bit of time. Um, 
And like I said before, this is a very, very simple, simple version of it. But sometimes the simplest is the best. So thanks for watching. This realtor is cooking, Jane Fritchie, my mom, Mildred. Bye bye. Uh, affectionately and thank you. known as Mia. Mia. So remember, like and subscribe to my page. Share it with all your friends. And most importantly, if you're looking to buy, list your house, give me a call, please. <laughs> my mom says I'm really good. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>